Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for giving us another opportunity again to meet on the platform of Second Ambassadors. We want to believe that um, our month has been going fine. And it's a prayer that the good Lord that has started the, uh, the month with us uh, will take us to the end of it if it is in his coming in Jesus' name. And today we want to uh, consider um, another interesting topic. And our topic for discussion today is Esau's of our time. Esau's of our time. And our text is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 25 and verse 29 to 34. Genesis 25 from verse 29 to 34. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you for bringing us to the second and Sunday of the month. We appreciate you for keeping all of us alive. Thank you for your, um, thank you for giving us that grace to, to see today. We are grateful. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Thank you for that privilege to to, uh, to be among the living. Father, we thank you. We pray that as we go into the discussion that you speak to us at the end, let all glory, let all praise be unto your name. Thank you because we have answered for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Um. So we bless the name of the Lord for giving us that grace again to um, be able to come on this platform to discuss. Uh, so today we are, like I said earlier, we are discussing this important topic, a source of our time. And uh, sometime last year we talked about um, something of our time. So today we are having something related and our topic today is a source of our time. And it's our prayer that as we continue, the Lord himself will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Um, just like we all know the story as we have it in the book of Genesis 25, verse 29 to 34, um, that, was, yeah, that particular text gave us an account of what happened between Esau and Jacob, how Esau uh, sold his birthright just because of uh, a pot of soup. And then um, for many years, many Christians have actually blamed him for what he did, um, blaming him for despising uh, his birthright. Even the Bible makes us to understand that even the Bible also you know, showed how he despised that which actually belongs to him. But then, uh, the sad thing is that many of us as Christians today, we are also in his shoes. Some of us, we, the way we behave, our attitude, uh, the, our, the, way, the choices we make in life, you know, in a way also, we can also be referred to as issues of our time. And I pray that the good Lord will deliver us. And from this trap in Jesus' name. Uh, so what we are saying in the sense that many of us, you know, um, in, in our attitude, in uh, the choices we make, in a way we we, we, we sell our birthright again. And of course, like we all know that when uh, we become born again, you know, we, we gain this birthright. But then eventually, uh, maybe because of our carelessness or because of our non talent attitude, uh, we lose this birthright again. It's our prayer that uh, by the reason of today's discussion, we'll pray to God and God himself uh, will restore us and all that we have lost as you guys are about right in Jesus' name. And the Bible because for us to understand what bad right means, the Bible because to understand that bad right means uh, and refers to us as uh, the right, the privilege, um, or the possession to which a person is entitled by birth. That means that when somebody is given birth to when somebody is born in a family, there are some things that you know actually belongs to that person, particularly if the person is a first child. And so in the same vein as Christians, when we become born again, there are some things that um, automatically belongs to us. And that's why it is important for us to be able to protect our batteries, it's better for us to be able to guide our batteries. And I pray the good Lord uh, will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. And so like I said earlier, that many Christians today, although we have read the account of Esau, and we have all agreed that what he did was bad, uh, but then we still repeat that same mistake by just you know being careless about uh, the path right that the Lord God Himself has gained for us, and so that's the essence of today's discussion. So for us to be able to um, see these areas of our lives that we need to make necessary corrections, and to also cry out to God uh, for restoration. So we we refer um, this uh, issues of our time. We refer these Christians that you know that have been non that have you know shown non attitude towards their but right as a source of our time, a suit. And I pray that as men that are still in that trap, the Lord Himself will deliver such today in Jesus' name. And then again, we also need to understand that it is possible for somebody uh, to sell his bad right without even having that understanding. It is possible for somebody to lose his or her bad right without even knowing what he or she has lost. And that was the case of so. You know, at that point of him losing it, he did not even know uh, what it means, he did not even value it, he did not even know the consequence until later in life and that's why it is important for us to discuss it now because many people later in life they will still come to god and be crying and be praying to god 
for restoration. But it's certain, however, is the fact that you know time will have been wasted, years will have been lost, and that's why it's important for us to start that process of uh, regaining our path right now. And I pray that as we cry to God today, He will answer all our prayers in Jesus' name. And so uh, we give. Um, so today we want to give like some examples of this bad right and therefore also be able to know uh, the consequence of um, losing them. And the first one we have here is peace of mind. I want us to know that as children of God, one of the things that God has given us is his peace. You know, he has given us his peace. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. So that means that as we be, when we become born again and Jesus comes into us, what we should have is the peace of God. And then if you look at instruction and um, Bible scholar because understand that and that 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 phrase or that that command fear not if we have leaked like more than 365 times in, like 365 times in the scriptures meaning that for every day and God has given us that command not to fear and but today so some of us as Christians we are still fearful so we are encouraging ourselves that God wants us uh, not to fear and then again in that in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, God also encouraged us to be people of faith. He said that for without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so instead of us you know, being fearful, instead of us being afraid, let's have faith in God. Let's pray to God and God of heaven will answer our prayers in the name of Jesus. And some of the ways um, in which some Christians respond, you know, in, by, and then again, at the end of the day, they lose their peace bad right and, uh, of peace. is the fact that they can't even trust God alone. And they believe that they still have to maybe go to their barriers or do one or two things to help God. And again, some of them also follow, you know, their friends' advice, uh, which is in the way of the world, to be able to overcome some of their challenges. At the end of the day, they end up having, um, of course, they can call it they have peace, but there is a different kind of peace, uh, which is filled with sorrow. So I pray that, that will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. And second, I um, pray right, that um, people, or let's say that we, are, we have a children of God, is that success. As far as we are children of God, God has granted us success. That's why uh, in the book of Jude chapter 1, verse 8, it says that this book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, but we shall meet it in the day and night, so that uh, we may uh, observe to do according to all that is in the end. And at the end of the day, we have what? We have good success. So, as Christians, as children of God, we need to understand the fact that good success is our bad right. So, God, you know, as at conversion, God has given us. That that bad right of success. So, what if in as much as we obey, in as much as we have done our part, you know, in following His command and His instruction is what we have in the Book of Proverbs, verse 29. And when He said that we should be diligent, He says, "Here the man didn't get His work." He said, "We will stand before kings." So God expects that we obey Him by being diligent in all that we do. But then we see that some Christians, you know, they just engage in frivolities. So they just, you know, live their lives the way they like. They don't even know the days of the, the month, and they, they sleep anytime, they wake up anytime. They are just careless about a lot of things. And I feel that as many that are still in there, should the Lord and will deliver them today in Jesus' name. And that's why eventually they end up as failures. They end up, they end up with disappointment. And I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. And the third, another bad right that we also need to understand that God has given us is prosperity. God, as far as the God that we serve, is a God of prosperity. And the, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, is prospered in all that he did. And so that means that as soon as we become born again, as soon as we become a, a, a genuine child of God, we are de designed to be to prosper. We are designed to be prosper. We have that seed of prosperity in us. And that's why God is trusting us as we give to us. We have a number of them in the scriptures. And we have that of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 when he said we should bring our tithes unto the Lord. We have when we encourage us to give our offering. We have when we said we should bring our first fruit. These are God instructions for us as his, as, as his children, for us to be able to prosper, you know, in this life. And, but then you see that some Christians, even though they've had it a number of times from the pulpit that they should pay their tithe, they still believe that they're in control of their money. And they, some of them will say that, well, I, 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 I work for my money, I, I dictate how I spend it. Some of them even believe that tithing is an Old Testament instruction. So, brothers and sisters, I want us to understand that if we still disobey God in this regard, then the outcome will be inevitable and the outcome of that will be poverty and momentary prosperity they can we can they can be prospering today but then it's just for a short time also and and some of some of them also end up having financial frustration i pray that that will not be a portion in jesus name so all that we are saying is the fact that as christians as genuine children, as children of god we need to understand the fact that god has designed us to prosper in this life 
and for us to prosper maybe financially we need to pay our tithe we need to give our fossil we need to you know give our fossil we need to give our offering and the lord himself will bless us as we do all of this in jesus name another battle that god has also given us is sound health god desire is that all of us will live in, in good health and that's why i make us understand and i think um in the new testament when he said that um he wish above all that, that that may prosper you know and be in good health so god desires that desires that we will prosper and also will be in good health and then when he gave us this instruction to also help us um to be in a good health, and that's the fact that he said that we should flee sexual immorality we should flee sexual immorality but then the certain is that some christians still engage in sexual sins in the secret and they believe that since the pastors are not there their fellow brothers and sisters in church are not there maybe their unit leader is not there that they are free to do whatever they like but not knowing that although um god may, you know, god may not expose them like that but then they're actually you know arming themselves and they are actually you know doing injustice to their own body system and i pray that as men that are still in that trap God will deliver them today in Jesus' name. And so they end up having STD, sexual transmitted diseases. Um, some that are married will have broken up, God forbid, some unwanted pregnancy. And it can also actually lead to death. And that's why we need to protect ourselves as children of God to abstain from sexual immorality. It is not God's plan for us. God's plan for us is for us to have sound health. And that's why he said earlier that if he wish above all things that we we'll, that will prosper and that we also be in good health. So that's God's design for us. So let's embrace sound health, and that will be our portion in Jesus' name. And then lastly, our uh, God's design is for us to also reign with Him eternally. It's our birthright. As long as we give us, as, as uh, at that moment of us, you know, accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, our name has been written in the book of life. So God's desire is that He will see us someday. Uh, in, in eternity god desires that you know we'll be able to meet with him we'll be able to see him we'll be able to reign with him in eternity and that's why brothers and sisters i want to encourage you particularly for those that have not given their life to jesus that tomorrow my job is today this best time to do so is now and god of heaven will help you in jesus name and god's instruction for us is that we should remember our creator in the days of our youth and so that means that as much as we uh, want to reign with god god encourages us to to remember him now we should not postpone it. We should not say, oh, I'll serve God later. Maybe when I'm 60, 70, or maybe after I've retired from work, then I can have time for good. I want us to know that some people have that kind of mindset, and I pray that God will deliver them in the name of Jesus. So what we are saying is the fact that as Christians, although eternity is our birthright, right, we must also you know, ensure that we walk towards that so that we'll be able to reign with God. And then again, um, if this is lost, if eternity is lost, um, if they don't actually serve God, you will say that they live on fruitful Christian life. They will not have any fruit. They will be unproductive. At the end of the day, they might even mix heaven. And that's why you and I should ensure that we we'll serve God now so that our eternity can be guaranteed. And I pray that the good Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. So in conclusion, I want us to know that in the case of um, Esau, he could not get his birthright back. You know, he, he felt bad about it. He lost it forever and ever. And that's why today, you know, Jacob is still very much regarded in the scriptures. Why? Because Esau's soul is birthright to him. Brothers and sisters, I want us to understand the fact that unlike Esau, we can actually gain our birthright back. We have the privilege to have our birthright back. And that's why we want to encourage you today to seek God in prayers, to cry to the Lord in prayers. I don't know the birthright you have lost. Is it peace of mind? Is it success? Is it prosperity? Is it your health? Uh, or maybe you have lost your salvation. It is not too late for you to come back to God. Um, please do so today. Call on Him today. Cry out to Him today. And the Lord Himself will answer your prayers and restore all that you have lost in terms of your birthright in Jesus' name. And um, perhaps you are listening at this time and you are here to give a life to Jesus. We want to encourage you to do so today. And um, because tomorrow my job will be too late. I'd like you to understand that there are a lot of things that are you stand to gain by giving your life to Jesus. And one of uh, those things that you stand to gain is the fact that you have you'll be restored to God's kind of life. I also to tell you that as long as we are in this world, there will be challenges. But then when we have God in our in our lives, when we have Jesus in our boat, we are sure of victory. And that's why we want to encourage you today, if I get to give us to Jesus, so please do so today because tomorrow might just be too late. So if you want to uh, accept the Lord Jesus, you can please repeat this prayer after just the Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word this uh, evening. I can only the fact that I'm a sinner. 
please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life from today. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please restore all my lost past rights. And at the end of everything on earth, help me to be able to read with you eternally. eternally. Thank you because you have answered my prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. If you have said that prayer with us, I want to congratulate you for making the best decision anybody can ever make in this in this life. I want to encourage you to join a Bible church around you. And please uh, join them as soon as possible. Also be a man and woman of prayer. Prayer is a means of communicating with God. At the same time, also try to uh, study the Word of God. If you don't have a Bible, you can contact us on numbers on the, the last screen of the discussion. I will get you one. As I pray that the good Lord will help you, the good Lord will help us uh, to make it to heaven in Jesus' name. And so finally, before we go this evening, we want to uh, close by um, having this prayer. And the prayer is, our dear Holy Father, please deliver us from every wrong step we have taken and in your mercy restore our lost path rights. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that deliver us from every wrong step we have taken in the name of Jesus. Every step we have taken, Lord God, that is taken that are wrong, that will affect our destiny negatively, we pray that, Lord, you, you will show us mercy. We pray that you will restore us in the name of Jesus. The Lord, our path right that we have lost, we pray for resurrection today. Please restore us in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So I want to thank you all for joining us again today. It's our prayer that you have been blessed by the message. Please, let's continue to cry to God for restoration, because I know that he will definitely restore us all. So one more time, I want to thank you for joining us. I want to wish you all a very wonderful week. God bless you.